lot going on that's an enterprise we'll take care of some of our housekeeping stuff first yeah. um if you're on right now we're going over the rx 10s today we're announcing all of them we're going to be showing all the models that we have so um if you have someone you might think will be interested in this share it out put it into some pages make sure other people can get the information that you're getting because there's going to be a lot of useful information in this episode. Most definitely, most definitely. Yeah. First of all, I want to introduce myself. If you've not been with us before, I'm Bill Batson and this is my daughter. Eden Batson. And you're on Blank Talk. This is a weekly show we do, uh, live questions and answers, um, highlighting different products as we go about it. So, yeah. A um, couple of things we want to talk about, a little housekeeping before we bring in our yes. special guest. We do our housekeeping first. Yep. So let's start with uh, the Roller for Kids. The kids program, we're gonna be heading down to Southern California to Dana Landing, and we'll be doing an uh, event down there for the Roller program. I will be there with some of my other uh, team members, pro staff, um, at the charity auction. We're gonna be auctioning off six custom rain shadows. If you're in the area, come on down, support the kids. Yeah. The Roller program is a great program. Um, takes kids out fishing. Yeah. Yep. And I'll be here holding down the fort. Yeah. Yeah. You, you be here. <laughs> I will. I will miss one Friday, but we'll figure all that stuff out later. Yeah, we'll figure it yep. out. We uh, usually do. Yep. Um, I had some guests here. A lot of people come up and and visit the Batson facility to design rods, um, to go over new products, to um, a lot of different things. We just had Forrest Mackey. From Stubborn Rods, him and Bear were in town. Yeah. And we did a couple days in the shop and then we actually went fishing yesterday. Yeah, you guys went halibut fishing. We did go halibut fishing yesterday, had a great time. Caught a lot of fish. Forrest got his personal best lingcod. Nice. Woo! Yeah, it was, a, it was solid, you know, 25 to 30 pound lingcod. So that was kind of cool. A lot of people coming up and visiting us this time of year. It's a beautiful yeah. time to be in Squim. It's gorgeous this week. Coming up this weekend, we have Father's Day. Oh, yeah. Super exciting. Yeah. He's he's going to get a little bit of attention. I hope I so. Woo. Me and my dad. He has to deal with me. So. <laughs> and that's a job in itself. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, so we just wanted to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Yeah. Um, and if you are not a father and you need to get something for your dad, we have a bunch of cool stuff on Build to Fish right now. So putting that in your mind. Nice. Um, and then we also have a giveaway coming up here pretty soon. Another Doc Ski Rod Another given away. Another Doc Ski Rod is going to be given away on July 4th. That is our next patriotic holiday. So if you want to keep an eye out on our social media pages, on our Facebook, our YouTube, and our Instagram, we're going to be posting about it on there and you'll get some more information in the next week. Perfect. Perfect. Excellent. Yeah. Right on. Um, also, we'll be heading to ICAST here soon. Um, I'm going to that one. Yeah, Eden's going to be there. You're going to do some promotional things yes. with the twins. Yes. Yep, and um, going around and seeing ICAST, Eden's first ICAST. It's probably my 20th. I know Mike's his, probably his 40th, <laughs> you know, if not, maybe his 50th. You never know. <laughs> He's over there rolling his eyes at you, I'm Of sure. course he is. You know, of course he is. But, you know, we got to give Mike a hard time, you know. He is the OG here, right? Yes. <laughs> so... Let's bring him in. All right. Introducing Mike Thorson, the world famous. He's been bat with Batson for 18 years. Um, he's our lead designer. Um, we've done a lot of projects together. We've worked together for a long time. He's like an uncle to me. After my dad passed away, he came in and really helped us out to build the company that we have today. I know that we've probably, oh, Mike, if you're going to take a guess, how many blanks do you think we've designed in the last 18 years? Oh my God, thousands literally, yeah. literally thousands. We got probably 500 active models right now, but over the years that have been added or discontinued or whatever, just countless. And then all the private label projects and stuff, it's just, it's hard to imagine how many really. Yeah, I yeah. was thinking about our portfolio. If I was gonna make an educated guess, I'd say between 15 to 1800 different blanks. All right, that's probably pretty close. You know, I yep. know that we're close to a million blanks sold under the Rain Shadow label, mm -hmm. you know, in the last 21 plus years. Um, but always something new, always something exciting, right? Always trying to work on new and yep. better. Yep, yep. you always, bet. Yep, always wanna do something new and exciting. So. The new series that we're going to talk about today is our new RX-10. It's the Eternity, the Return of the Eternity, right? Yep. There are... 12 models. 12 models. Yep. Thank you, Mike. And so we're going to go through each and every model today 
to show it off. We have these in stock now. We are sending them out to dealers. Uh, shout out to Get Bit and HFF. They have them coming to them if they don't have them already in stock. So those are two dealers. And any one of your dealers or a customer can order any one of these blanks. We have the build sheets all created too. So if they want to look at our suggested builds online, we'll tell you how to get there a little bit later. But those are all done as well. So that makes it real easy to have the correct guide spacing and everything is all ready to go for you. Right. And on those build sheets, we used all of the high end stuff. That would be yes. the carbon and the titanium. If you're going to build on this rod, you want to keep it as light as possible, right, Mike? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So a lot of this stuff is, is a sensitive based product, light in the hand. And we're going to go through each and every blank and, and the application of every blank. So I think we're ready to start. Okay. Um, before I get into specific models, what we were really trying to accomplish here was, you know, set a new benchmark for uh, bass and inshore walleye style rods for the company. Um, you know, as you move up in tiers, we've had our Immortal series. Uh, we've had some older eternities. This new one we spent probably 18 months developing. Uh, spent over a year with various models on the water. Probably one of the coolest things that I can say about that whole developmental process, we never had a single failure uh, of a rod in, in a fishing application, which is huge, especially when you're trying to push the envelope with a product like this. So we're very confident that it's a very durable, but also incredibly light and sensitive at the same time. And we put those rods in some guys' hands. At yes. Some we got monsters. We didn't. Uh, <laughs> we didn't baby A uh, few blank talks back, you guys meant Sarge. Yeah. And, when Sarge sets the hook, the boat rocks, and he's been fishing one of the six, eight medium heavies, no issues with it. A uh, couple weeks ago, I was out and I was using a new seven, four heavy casting rod and was able to get a six and a half pounder, uh, largemouth right out of the weeds, real close to the boat. No problem at all moving the fish and flipping it right into the boat. The, they're dynamite blanks, really sensitive. Um, Design-wise, what we did is we, we looked at what different uh, fibers and materials are out there. About a year ago, Torre, and, and I'm not going to tell you specifics because it's proprietary, but they introduced a new fiber that we were really happy with the technical specs on. Um, so that was the foundation of what we based it off of. There's more to the design than just the fiber. How much resin do we use? What kind of pattern layups do we use? I'm not going to get super specific because we they're trade secrets essentially, but we spent a lot of time and effort getting these things tweaked to where they are today. Um, I think it's our best high-end blank that we've ever offered. Uh, we've had some other ones that were quite good, but they utilize technology that does have issues. These new ones, I can't really fault them in any way. Uh, and the proof in the pudding was when we had them on the water. Uh, and, you know, they've just worked out incredibly well. Um, you know, model-wise, there's, I think it's seven casting and five spinning. Yep. Um, basically, in each range, we did a 6.8M, 6.8 medium heavy, 7.2M, 7.2 medium heavy, 7.6 medium, 7.6 medium heavy. Those are all essentially similar rods, just added length. With that added length, obviously, there's new applications that you can do and so forth. Then there's a 7.4 Heavy that your suit, and we're going to get more specific here. I'm just kind of glossing over it real quick. Then we've got a 6.8 ML spin, 6.8 MXF spin, 6.10 MXF spin, um, and a 7.2 ML and 7.2 M spin. So really hits all the core rods that most guys are going to use, especially for bass. Uh, it covers a lot of the walleye applications. And there's certain models there that would have certain inshore applications as well. Yeah, some so, of those inshore applications, maybe um, redfish, yep, flounder, yep. trout, some of the, the lighter stuff. I know Kerry built up a rod the other day for Sean O'Connell. Yep. Um, who's uh, won the World Redfish Championship a couple years in a row, yep. I think. Back to back World Champions. And champion. it was the lightest rod I think Kerry's ever put together for that kind of application, yep. the physical weight of it. And we're real anxious to get that in Sean's hand and see what he thinks in, uh, after he's played with it. Yes. Um, you know, specifically casting the 6.8M applications in my mind, um, you know, quarter to three eighths ounce spinner baits, light 
Texas rigs or what's become really popular in the last couple years is a Tokyo rig. I don't know if you're familiar with it or not, but it's an awesome way to present a bait similar to what you do with a Texas rig. Um, and then, you know, topwaters, Senkos, baits, which has become really popular. Yeah. The lighter, uh, smaller topwater baits in particular are glide baits that are relatively light. The, the medium power uh, works really, really well for. I know I've been using the 6-8M throwing three eighths ounce spinner baits. I got about a four and a half pounder a couple weeks ago on that very rod, handled the fish great, loads real well with the that weight range of uh, lure, awesome blank. Right. Um, and we go into our six eight medium heavy. You know, if you're gonna pick one rod to kind of do everything bass wise, uh, you know, a six eight to seven six medium heavy is gonna be awesome. Same similar action, but you're up in the weight range a little bit. Instead of lighter baits, you know, three eighths to half now, you a little bit heavier cover, a little heavier line, um, but doing similar presentations. I, I call it more, you know, now we're getting into heavier uh, Tokyo rigs where you're using more weight. Uh, any kind of a craw worm presentation that you're doing, Texas rig with, you know, say three eighths to half ounce weight, that medium heavy uh, blank is going to work real well. As you go longer, a lot of guys like to do Carolina rigging with a little bit longer blank because you're dragging that bait on the bottom and you do kind of a long sweeping hook set. That added longer lever gets the hook in the fish in the mouth a little bit more quickly. So, you know, what I said about the 6.8M is going to hold true with the 7.2M. Um, that additional four inches is going to increase, uh, six inches I guess it would be, anyway, the, it's yeah. going to increase your casting distance a, a little bit. Um, I prefer, you know, I've gotten to where I've gotten real use, I used to use a lot of six, six, and seven foot. The additional length, what I find when you're pitching, um, doing any underhand presentations, which are really popular um, with the longer rod, get a little added distance. Um, and I think you get a little bit better hook set because you're fishing with a longer lever. Um, you know, the, the again, we've got the same thing in a 7.2 medium heavy. All of what I described on that 6.8 is going to be applicable to the 7.2. Um, heavier Texas rigs, heavier Tokyo rigs, heavier spinner baits. If I had to pick one rod. Out of the whole series. Out of the whole series that would be your do-everything rod, it would be the 7.2 M8. That's going to cover a ton of different bass applications really well. You know, then you get into the 7.6, and again, additional casting distance, better hook set, uh, same kind of weight ranges and everything. The 7.4 Heavy, that rod really, in my mind, is absolutely perfect for if you're throwing frogs into cover. You know, a lot of guys fish frogs in open water, and the medium heavies are going to be a little bit better for that. Uh, but if you're doing heavy cover at all, that 7.4 heavy as far as more power throughout the whole blank. Still has a light enough tip that you can load it with a, you know, 3 8 to half ounce lure. Um, punching, heavier jigs. Anytime you're in a really gnarly cover where you're up in your line weight quite a bit to get the fish out of there, that 7.4 heavy is really sweet. I did spend a day fishing with it. Um, a couple of weeks ago and I was really really impressed with the blank and was fortunate enough to hook a real big fish. Uh oh. Uh oh. Just step off and come see me. Is it? Is Mike? Mike's mic. Mike. Mike's mic is not working. Oh it came unplugged. It came unplugged. We fixed it. How long ago? Good we can start all over. No. All right. He's good. But if you stay on later we're going to be trying to give away two of the new Eternity RX Ten blanks. Two of them today. Two of them today. Wow. Yeah. Very special day. So keep Killing watching. Me. Keep on. We're gonna pick from random commenters who's gonna be winning the RX Ten blanks. Excellent. So we're gonna give away a couple of blanks. We're gonna give away a new hat. Yeah. We've got a new hat. You know, we're gonna give away another hat. A couple of hats today. We should give away a hat right now. Let's what? give away a hat right now, just for your troubles. All right. Let's okay. go. This is an auto hat. It is embroidered. Has the new. Team logo on it. It says Batson on the side. And James, can we get a winner for the hat? How long ago did we lose Mike? Not, not very long. Okay, good.
Because I want to I want to pull out the blanks as you talk about them, Mike. Okay. So this, we're going to. Which one would you like to start with? Let's start with the. Whatever she's holding. Six eight uh, ml. Oh. Spinning sixty eight ml. Oh okay, six eight ml. That's a good little blank. Yep. So who's going to be the winner? David Thomas. David, David Thomas. Thomas. David Thomas, contact Eden, and we'll get this hat out to you. You contact me by going to the Bassett Enterprise Facebook page. You send a little message, say, hey, my name is David Thomas, and I want a hat, and I would Let's like to receive my hat. Again. I'll ask you some questions, and I'll send it out to you. Perfect. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Hey, that's a, that's that fine. is a nice hat. I, that. I okay. like that hat. Good hat. I like this one, too. There Except I'm not a big flat bill guy. <laughs> you know? Mike, come on back here. All right. All right. I unplugged my mic. My bad. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's quite all right. But as we um, talk about the blanks, I want I want to actually hold it and maybe bend it so you can okay. talk about them as sure. we go. Sure. So we're going to start because Eden had this one in her hand. Okay. We're going to start with the new ETES 68ML. Give us the specs on that. Um, six foot eight, in, and as far as lure range, what I set it up at was eight to three eighths. Um, Fast action, four and a half tip top. Um, as far as applications and techniques that I would suggest with this blank, kind of a lost art uh, recently is inline spinners. You know, as kids, we grew up throwing MEPS and Blue Fox and Rooster Tails. Yep. Really, really effective on smallmouth bass. Perfect blank for that particular uh, application. Probably. You know, size one and twos with the ML. If you want to throw a three, you're going to go up to the M that we do offer as well. Right. Um, any kind of little marabou or hair jigs that are becoming, you know, it's interesting. Baits are kind of like fashion. It goes in circles. And a lot of these hair jigs and marabou jigs are making a comeback. Very, very effective for, again, for smallmouth. Um, any kind of light presentation, whether it's a light Ned rig or Nico rig or whatever you're doing, really good blank for that application as well. Now for the walleye guys, really optimal for pitch and light jigs with bait, um, say a eight ounce head with a leech or a minnow, a piece of crawler for when you're working for walleyes or, or large perch or whatever in a little bit shallower water. Great all around blank for that as well. Perfect. What's the uh, blank weight, Mike? Uh, the blank weight on that one is 1.4 ounces. 1.4 ounce. That is the ETES 68 ML. Yep. You want to bend it here? I'll yeah. hold the tip for you. Okay. Oh, okay. So why this is a fast action rod. Yep. So you're going to see, you'll see the fast action. It's still got lots of power. Yeah. Pulls back a little bit, right? Yep. What we tried to do though, to help in one of the design parameters, if Bill loads that again for me a little bit, you can see the flex, but as lift a little harder, Bill, what you, you notice right away, it starts to move in this Pulls area back. and the, Beauty of that is, is if you shut the blank off real hard and yeah. you try to run that, that weight range or that's the stiffness all the way out, that's where you get that tip breakage. Mm -hmm. And we were very specific about how we designed that action yeah. after that initial fast we tip. We kind of call it like a two-speed. Right. It's like a two-speed Exactly. Speed blank. That's a good way to describe yes. it. It's, you got your fast tip and then you go to the, the, the meat of the rod, but it gives a little bit after that initial fast tip. Right. So... That's a great little blank. Yes, it is. It's six eight M for pre um, light presentations. Light presentations. Right. You know, right. you're going to run your small diameter braids, or you know, six and eight pound mono would be the max probably. Sure. The next one I like to talk about is the six eight MXF. So right. It's one power up, right? One power up, and it's a little bit quicker in the tip. We if you call look it at an this extra one. Fast, right. Yep. So you can you see. You look at that. It's a little bit faster in this area, yep. but again, if I load it. Yes. It still gives past that, right. you know, that shutdown point. Right. Um, this blank for me, years ago, we designed it here and in, in where I used to work priorly, and it's been one of our most consistent sellers for probably over 20 years. Um, I think on this one, I suggested uh, Ned rigs. So this is going to be the one if you're, you know, the Ned rig fishing has come on so much in the last few. Can you explain a Ned rig a little yeah, bit? Yeah, basically if you're taking a mushroom style jig head and imagine taking a five inch Senko and cutting it in half and sticking it on there and you got a two and a half to three inch bait, cast it out and you just barely hop it on the bottom. It's Hopping a it off the bottom. real finesse presentation 
when the baths are in a neutral or what I call highly pressured. Uh, it's great post-spawn because they tend to move back out off the banks and they're not feeding like they do after they get more aggressive. Really, really effective. In fact, in, right now in parts of Washington, it would be awesome. Had some buddies that were just up on Mille Lacs Lake. I know they caught a lot of really nice fish uh, using a Ned rig. So uh, Sounds um, like something I would fish for redfish um, or flounder down in Texas also. Yep. You know, with that lead head and a small, a small yeah. squiggly tail, bouncing it off the bottom. Yep. A, a Nico rig, what you're doing is you're taking a, a single style bait or, a, or a, a plastic worm or whatever, and you're inserting weight into one end of it. So when that bait falls, it will tend to float up on the bottom. This is a great blank for that as well. Another thing that I do a lot of, and, and growing up in Iowa where there was a lot of shad based forage, I take this rod right here and I throw a number five or even a number seven shad wrap. That's frankly one of my go-to baits when I'm looking for fish. The number five is awesome when the shad are in a little bit smaller uh, stage of their growth. The seven when they get a little bit bigger. But it's really easy to cast them on a spinning rod like this. Very difficult to cast a light balsa bait with a casting rod. It's just, I, I, I don't even try to do it. I use a rod like this and it works really, really well. Rod? Yep. Yeah. And again, you could start crossing over to some of the smaller spy baits with this if you want to use a spinning rod as well. Um, nice little blank. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. That, that I, what's, the I, weight, what's the weight on that one, Mikey? That one is 1.45. So yeah, it's yeah. only... <laughs> not a whole lot more. more than yep. the medium light, right? Right. It's all not about whole... the design at that point. Yeah. Right. It's right. Really we do light. a little bit different type of reinforcement to get that action the way it works and right. speed it, speed it up a little bit. So it it's it's a dynamite blank. Good. One of my, I probably when I'm out in my boat probably have three six eight MXFs rigged up with various baits. That's one of my favorite all around blanks. Really a really sweet yep. sweetheart rod to fish with. I got a question. I know people are going to ask this question when they get these blanks, okay? This is a sanded swirl finish. I mean, it has no finish on it at all. Right. Right? But if you slide your hand up and down the blank, once in a while you'll feel a little ridge. Or you yep. might feel somewhere where the solophane was pulled off. Right. Tell them why you might feel that once in a while. Well, essentially, when you're, you're sanding a blank like that, I mean, we designed to have it sanded because you're going to remove material. If you haven't seen a blank manufacturing process, you know, you roll the patterns around a steel mandrel and then you pressure wrap a cello tape around the blank to compact and take the air out of it and it's baked on. Okay, it goes in the oven with this cello tape on. When you remove that tape, there what we call those little ridges or marks or swirls that you see, a spiral pattern, we call it a witness mark. Um, not sure where that came from. It's just been, that's what we've always called it. It's the witness that something was there. Right, One exactly. <laughs> so our manufacturer's real careful about sanding that off, but sometimes due to the resin flow and stuff, you're going to have a little bit more in little tiny spots. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the blank. And if you want to take a, a scotch bright pad or something and lightly sand that off, you can. I don't think you're going to find a lot of them. No. Uh, and it isn't detrimental to the blank Mainly at all. Mainly on the tip, just because right. they're extra careful. Right. right. But what, what happens if you try to just religiously remove all of that with the typical sanders available, you can compromise the wall thickness right. a little bit. And obviously we don't want that to happen because then you're getting uh, blanks back because that's a weak spot. Right. But in general, by removing the paint and stuff, we, it does lighten the blank up slightly. A little uh, bit. Yeah, just a little yeah, tiny bit. Gives you a real neutral uh, color to work with too. Yes. So any, almost any thread color works real well with that yep. particular finish. Yep. So perfect. What's All the right. next one you got there? I got Eden? right here. Oh, I've do got you? the ETES. This is one of my favorites. The 610? 610 MXF. Yeah. Right? This so. was our the blank that we designed specifically for drop shot fishing. If you look at that, it's really quick in the tip. Now, why do you want that? You see that light tip, and if I just sit here, and I mean, you can see it's, it moves very easily. Yeah. You know, I'm probably, most of you know how to fish a drop shot rig, but what I like to do with, with that type of a setup is I'm picking that rod up, and I get the weight on the bottom. Generally, you got a weight below the bait you're presenting. That's why it's called drop shot. Anyway, you watch how far that tip is moving, especially when you lift it up. So let's say that it moves just a little tiny bit and then on the 
next three or four hops, it's, you, you kind of look at how far it's moving when you're lifting that weight up and down. All of a sudden you pick it up and it stays down a little bit further. That's when you set, set the, the You hook. reel down and set the hook. <laughs> We specifically designed that tip light enough to be able to do that. And it, the, the fish, after they suck that bait in, we don't want them to feel that. If you use too stiff a rod for drop shotting, they're gonna spit it out if, when they feel you lift if that tip is too stiff. Right. So it's a, it's a real fine balance when you're designing the tip of a drop shot rod. Now, I'm talking drop shotting, you know, traditionally where it's a uh, three eighths of an ounce or less. Now, if you're getting into heavier drop shot, that 6-8 rod would work yeah. or whatever, yeah. but you've got a much heavier weight on there. And that does, you know, if you're fishing deeper, bigger baits, that has become more popular. But this is a true drop shot. Right. Uh, certainly works for inline spinners. All the other finesse presentations that we've been talking about work real well. The only thing I would steer away from on this rod, it wouldn't be one of my first choices for pitching a, a jig with live bait. A real fast tip like that will, if you Pull cast hard, it'll, it'll cast the bait right off right. The, the jig or whatever you're doing. So, but the more uh, modern action ones yep, better for light Yep, baits, just a right. standard fast yeah. rod instead of extra yeah. fast would be my choice for that. Exactly. Um, what is the tip on most of these, Mikey? We're looking at. Oh boy, they're all in that, I think. Like four or five range? Yeah, four or five on the spinning are all four right. or five. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we have, I. I think the casting range from four and a half and then that seven four heavy is a six. So even that, a heavy in our revelation or whatever is gonna be a six and a half. These are a lot smaller diameter blanks in that tip area. Right. I think we have our build sheet here for this one, Mike. Here's the ETS 610 MXF, Yep. right? If you wanna bring that camera in, you can, we will show you um, how we would, how we set it up, right? Um, we do have quite a few guides on here. You got a five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 guides yep. on this spinning rod. This is more than most people, but it helps transfer the power throughout the blank better, right? It doesn't, and you're, it, it, you're, you're not fighting against that fast tip. On a fast tip rod, if you, if you don't use enough guides, you've got line going straight across. It can actually uh, reduce the brake strength a little bit, and by adding a couple of additional guides near that tip area, you get away from that problem. Yes. And, you know, with these, when we're specking, I think we're spec titanium. You're not yeah. adding a si significant amount of weight, no. and they're all single foot, so you're not, you know, the the wrap and the finish isn't adding a whole lot either. Exactly. Um, you know, we've got the nubbin design, you know, so you only got your butt cap, and you got your winding check, you've got your reel seat, which is like a like a rear yeah. grip actually yep. behind yep. the back end. Yep. And then we'll have the little nubbin rear yep. grip. Yep. Basically, you don't need much up there. You've got your other trim pieces here and you can know that we're big blue i'm a big blue fan so that's what i would use for that yep. particular build like yep. you're saying we have all of these prints on our guide spacing yep if you guys have not fished with one of our rapid spin seats yet boy you really owe it to yourself to build a rod with one of those on i'm i really do a lot of spin fishing I'm, I'm very adequate, or, or, I, I, I like casting rods for heavier applications, but I'm kind of known as a, a finesse guy. Yeah. I like to use, growing up in Iowa, you were fishing a lot of fish that were pressured, and we had a lot of success going down the bank after guys that were power fishing, throwing tubes and little jigs and finesse baits, so right. kind of my whole wheelhouse there. And that reel seat absolutely is the finest one that I've ever fished with as far as comfort and sensitivity, and I've designed and tried a lot of them and that that is the very best one out there yeah that rapid seat is very popular with yep. the custom market yep. i know we have some of the small manufacturers using them but yep. uh, within a custom market that rapid seat you can't go we got on. some surprises coming in that area yeah. pretty soon too i'm yeah. not going to tell you what yet but yeah um yeah. it's going to be cool so yes all right we'll talk about another one here mikey this one is the ETS 72 ML. Okay. Yeah. Take the 6.8 and add some additional length to it. Six inches. But also, yeah. this is going to have some more applications for walleye, in my opinion. You know, Lindy rigging isn't as big as it used to be, but that's the absolute perfect blank for doing that presentation. Uh, the added. With Mr. Lindy. What's that? Don't you know Mr. Lindy? Well, I know Alan Ron <laughs> Linder, who uh, marketed that under yeah. Lindy Little Joe back in the day. Yeah, yeah I, I've yeah. had the blessing to fish with Al a couple of times. Great guy. He's still got a show on TV. Yep, Linder's Angling yeah. Edge. Yep, yeah. great, really great mornings. folks. Yep, he's yeah. a neat guy. He's a good guy. Um, yeah. 
So the other popular thing with walleyes are, are again pitching the lighter jigs, and this is a little bit slower than that extra you fast. Know, if you look at it, yeah. it's a little bit um, slower. You see how it isn't quite as quick. Yeah. It is, yeah. in other words, we're not doing this to the tip. Right. It's, it's a little bit. And it pulls back power. Right. Yeah. So power pulls back. dynamite for uh, fish and slip bobbers as well. Um, typically, uh, let's say you go to Leech Lake in Minnesota in the summer and they're out on submarine island or whatever i can't remember the name of it for sure but a lot of times the fish are suspended and over sunken sunken islands and you you just rig a slip bobber to the depth you're seeing those fish at that type of rod i mean you can lob it out there and not throw the bait off it makes just it, it, it works really well actually this one too if you want to get into throwing those little crank baits like i was talking about the added length will add a little bit of casting distance. What, crank, what size crankbait, Mikey? Uh, I, I call number five, number seven shad wraps. Uh -huh. I'm talking quarter ounce stuff or yeah. smaller. Sure. There's a lot of smaller crankbaits out there that can be really, really effective. Again, when fish have been pressured and looking at larger baits all the time, you, you downsize a little bit and they'll, they'll munch on it. So it, 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 I the, love doing that. And a lot of these spinning applications, it's, it's more of the finesse, right? Yep. It's a finesse. And more, a lot of people are using spinning reels. Yep. You know, but the blank doesn't care. You can make a casting rod out of right. it, too. It's right. It's just it's harder to throw a bait caster. You have right. to have it dialed in, and yep. so there's no backlash. And yeah, and, like and you know, you're usually using quite a bit lighter line. Most of the time, you're, um, gen you, you, you're probably fishing in a little bit clearer water where you have to go down in line size, and you're really trying to... Similar to what a fly guy does where he's matching the hatch, that's what a lot of time you're doing with finesse fishing. You're, right. you're dialing it into those little lures and, and what you know, the size of bait fish they're eating right now or whatever. Exactly. You know, the, there's, again, this would be great throwing the little marabou jigs that have been uh, more popular again. Uh, hair jigs are making a comeback. Great for that as well. I know VMC introduced a, a new hair jig with a large eye. I know Al's really fired up about that one. Oh, yeah? Perfect rod for that you know it'd be a great great for that application um, so when we start moving from a spinning rod so say the 68 ml mm -hmm. to a casting rod a 68 m mm -hmm. why do why do we change the classifications well generally what i'll do is the blank diameter will go up on a casting rod if you look at the specs a little more wall thickness in the butt area of the rod and if you took a uh Probably the simplest way to explain it, a medium casting would be a medium heavy spin. If you kind of, that's a real generalized. So it's a half power? Right. Your, your power, power is, yeah. is a little bit more on a right. casting rod. Generally, you're, you're handling a little bit larger bait. If you took a 6.8M spin and a 6.8M cast, the cast is going to be rated slightly higher as far as lure range and line, line rating and stuff. So. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Because yeah, you see, mostly most of the casting stuff are the medium, the medium heavy, and the heavies. Yeah. What I did with during some of the testing, I took the 6.8M casting blank uh -huh. and built it as a spinning rod. As a heavier spinning rod. As a heavier spinning rod when I'm throwing, you know, four to six inch worms. Or I fish a lot of eighth ounce bass jigs and because and, I like, to, again, the downsize finesse presentation. Right. It worked beautifully. Um, a dear friend of mine that lives in northern Minnesota, Dwayne Peterson, who was with Northland Tackle for years, has been using one of those as well and, and just loves the rod. Uh, we built it up and sent it up to him to try out for us, and he just sent me rave reviews. Excellent. So Excellent. All right, let's take a break for a second, Mike. We okay. talked about quite a few of those spinning models. Um, we'll get into some of our casting models so you can share the... The techniques and the applications, but let's give away a blank, Eden. What do you What do you think? Why there don't you we go. Eden wanted to do something. She's over there, Dad. I'm getting tired and bored mm. over here. No, oh. I want to give something away. I'm getting antsy. Getting antsy. So we're gonna give away an RX10. We're gonna give away an RX10. So actually, today Eden said we're giving away two of them. Two of them. So you RX10 of your choice. Of your choice. Of course, yeah, because you don't want to send somebody a heavy yeah. when they're a finesse fisherman, right? And if you win one and you're not a rod builder, you can just give us a call. We'll connect you with someone who can build one for you with that blank in your area. Yep, most yeah. definitely. We got rod builders all over the world. We got rod builders all over the world. Beautiful, yep. okay. You know, you know there, there, there was a survey done one time, there's 200,000 rod builders. 
in the United States. Two hundred thousand. Well, where are they? Well, they're they're buying from Batson. <laughs> That's where they are. That most, is where they are. Most of them are customers. Yeah. <laughs> but let's go ahead and give a blank away. I already know who's gonna win it. Oh, you already know who's gonna win it. Who? Yeah. William Meadows. William <laughs> Meadows. William Meadows. Thank you for watching. Share it with a friend. Tell people about the Batson product. Get a hold of Eden, and we'll send you a blank of your choice. Yes, message Batson Enterprises on Facebook. You yep. need to click our username. Send me a little message. Pick out which R10 model you want. You might want to watch the rest of the episode to see which one best works for your application. Most definitely. Um, and you won. Excellent. Congratulations. Awesome. I also wanted to make a note. I saw some people really like the hat that I gave away at the beginning of the episode. Uh -huh. And those are going to be available on our website, build2fish.com. So it's build the number two fish.com. If you like any of the hats, any of our merch. Except this shirt. Except that, that shirt. That's a Batson original. It's a custom. Um, it's on build2fish.com. Excellent. So, Let's go over this one and then we'll go into our casting models. Excellent. We will have a new product catalog coming out in early July. So be looking on the Batson Facebook pages, social media, things like that. We have over 150 new products coming out. Um, exciting stuff. This is, this is part of them. But early July, we should have that new product catalog. Contact us. I'll send a link out. And Jeff said he will send a link out. So let's move on. So we talked about the spinning models, right? Mike, want to step back in here? Sure. I know Mike is a, w a wealth of knowledge. I mean, he's been doing this forever. I mean, like I, I've said before, and I'll say it again, bats and enterprises would be nothing, or we wouldn't be as popular as we are without Mike Thorson. And he's brought a lot of experience to our team, and he's an icon in the industry, if not one of the best. Okay, this one we got here is the 6.8M. Yep. We'll go ahead and flex this one. It's got one. more power. I can already feel it. Yeah, you it. can already feel it. Uh -huh. Not quite as fast in the tip as the spinning rod. Sure. And if you notice, too, when I'm pulling on it now, it's it does have more power in the back two-thirds of the blank. I can feel it. Yep. And you can actually feel it in your hand, yep. the power. Yep. Right? But light. I mean, how light yep. is this blank for? That one is 1.64 ounces. So 1.64 ounces. Very, very light blank weight. Right. That particular one, like I said, I built uh, up a sample, and I've been throwing, um, I make spinner baits myself. We gave some away a couple blank yep. talks ago. I throw a lot of 3.8 ounces, and that rod has worked spectacular. Last year, caught some large smallmouth on it, and then earlier this year, I happened to have a new boat that I, well, a new used boat, but anyway. It's new to you. First, yeah, first <laughs> fish I got was on that rod, uh, four and a half pound large mouth, um, handled it great. And you built it as a spinning rod? No, it's a, it's a, a casting. It's a casting yep, rod? Yep, and I've got, the I think. The blank doesn't know what you're gonna do with it. Right. Just because it says it's a casting rod doesn't mean you have to build it as a casting right. rod or a spinning rod just because it has a spinning rod. This one. a lot of guys have lighter application where they want to use those little 1,000 bait casters yep. to throw small baits. So they'll take a spinning blank and build it into a yep. casting rod. You can, you certainly right. can, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. You know, for this one, I've got down uh, spinner baits, you know, Texas rigs where you might be using an eight to three sixteenth, maybe up to a quarter ounce weight, you know, a smaller worm, you know, one odd, maybe two odd hook at the largest certainly applicable to that uh you know a cinco if you're just doing it rat wacky style or whatever that rod is light enough that you can cast it but it has that hook setting power that you need um this, light buzz baits and again spy baits with these lighter rods like this yeah. perfect application um top water i'm I, you know i'm old school i throw a lot of pop bars that rod's perfect for that you know i'll generally have 10 or 12 pound test spooled up on a uh, reel that I'm using on that size of rod and, and uh, pop bar I've caught hundreds and hundreds of bass on and um, you know there's a larger top waters obviously but I think everybody knows what I'm talking about mm -hmm. and those are usually a quarter to three eighths of an ounce and that's the perfect okay. match for that bait. What's nice about these rods even though this these wouldn't be considered a finesse rod right when you're throwing no. poppers up those are all reaction bites you know spinner yep. baits those are out reaction but what's nice about it it's light in your hand all day right? Yep. I mean, you can, no fatigue using that all yeah, day, that's I mean, for sure. That's that's what a lot of guys are looking for because, you know, those tournament guys or those guys that are throwing, you know, 
how many thousands of casts oh. a day. Yep. You know, those a couple ounces make a difference to some yes, people. Yes, it does. Yep. Not, not to me, but it does to some people. Yeah, you build it up the way we've got them specced out, and these things are, you'll be amazed at how light they feel in your hand. Right. Yeah, but again, I want to emphasize, I, you know, are they as durable as a Revelation? No. no. But you're not really sacrificing the durability like so many high-end blanks out there. Taking too much resin out. Yeah, or yeah they're, they're pushing the envelope yeah. uh, different than the way I do it and right. can be problematic. Right. No, I'm a big fan of uh, not taking resin out of a blank. We have a question. Uh, this is kind of a general one for yes. me. But, uh, so the, the previous highest end we offered was the Immortal RX-8. Yes. What's the difference between this one and the Immortal RX-8? Just how big of a leap? Michael, between our oh, Immortal Boy, and probably. Big, pretty big. Pretty big as yes. far as reduction in weight. Uh -huh. um, different. Pattern layups, different size tooling, um, different wall thickness. Definitely different wall thickness. Yeah, we're, we're, we're pushing the envelope more with this particular blank. Um, but we're not sacrificing a lot of um, no, no, power or, no, or really it, durability. Right. It's, it's, just, it's just taking it about as far as you can, in my opinion, without being a problematic. Right. Um, I don't want problems. You know, there's a lot of different ways you can do that. People have tried carbon fiber scrims and various things, and they all offer certain things, but they all are all compromises as well. I think the way we approach this, and again, I'm not going to get overly specific, yeah, don't but do that. Um, <laughs> it, it, it ended up being a, a really nice way to approach this without giving up some of the things that you normally do right. with this style of blank. So um, is it the big of a leap, Mike? I mean, people it, are gonna I, say it, it's going to be. There's going to be a small difference in sensitivity, certainly a difference in weight. Um, diameters and stuff, I think you'll find these in general are probably a little bit smaller. Um, not across the board, because on some of the casting rods, we took the diameter up to help get the stiffness we wanted without adding a lot more material on the back end of the rod. Right. So, you know, that. I, you're going to notice if you took two blanks and something I do a lot is I'll take and we have a crack in the concrete and I'll just take a blank and I'll drag the tip across it. Then I'll do it with an immortal. And this one, you're going to feel a difference in sensitivity. It's right. just, you, you can, it, it's not like it's huge, huge, but it is certainly there. Little things when you're fishing it, uh, you know, let's say you're, you're doing a, a swim bait and you got a little spinner underneath the body of the swim bait, which has become popular. Yeah. Ask yourself how many rods you have that you can feel that spinner blade moving. Probably none. This one you can. Right. Okay. Little stuff like that you'll pick up on. You're you're snapping a jig through the weeds a little bit. You get one blade of grass on. You you're may not notice it. it on some of the other rods. With this one, you're going to know it right away. Nice. That kind of stuff is what you're going to pick up on. Nice. Um, and you know, so it's 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 so certainly if the fish there. So swam by it. Am I going to feel the fish when he swam yeah, by? Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not on ask, you know, because I know I'm going to get asked. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move up in a power, Mikey. Let's look, look at the 6 8 medium head. All right, now, now if you look. Into these powers, yeah, if you look right? at. Yeah, if you look at this one, uh -huh. basically stiffer tip, yes. and you can see that the blank is a little bit slower. Not much, it'll, and, but you can see it, it isn't quite like that. Right. You know, it's, it's starting to bend back here. That's because of the additional material on the tip. The tooling. You don't is, want it to be fast, though, no, a power rod like this no, and a light rod. You'll blow right. this thing up. The tooling um, is very similar. We added some a little tiny bit of wall thickness. This is still, when you, say, pitch a jig or whatever presentation you're doing, that tip loads properly for that weight range. Sorry. Go um, Sorry, Mike. Go ahead. Really, so really heavy. nice. So, you know, the, the, this is one that uh, if you guys watch Blank Talk when Sarge and I did it, this is the one we had him using for over a year and again trust me he's <laughs> he's a serious bass guy and when he sets a hook you know it the bo boat rocks and he's got a 21 foot boat so you know it, it this it, incredibly durable but versatile right um yeah i, I it, again you know 10 years ago everybody used six six now every we made we came out with six eight 
a medium heavy, if you had to pick one, and you could do it with either 6.8, or 7.6, it's going to cover 80% of the various bass presentations most guys are going to do with a casting rod. Sure. Okay? So great all-around choice if you want to get your feet wet with this series and see how you, you know, pick out one of the medium heavies. You, you, that's what you would do, Mike. If yep. you said, hey, I want to try the new bats and turning them. And just pick out a length, 6.8, yep. 7.2, or 7.6, yep. right? Yep, and I'd grab medium a medium heavy. heavy if I want a casting rod. So it's and like it, when people used to talk about the old 8.43, right? Yep. If you're going to have one bass ride, it's the 8.43. Yep. So this is basically our, our, our 8.43. Basically, that's right. exactly right. Perfect. Yep. Perfect. Yep. Excellent. All right, let's move up. So now we are we go from that 6.8 to 7.2. So we've got a 7.2 medium here, Mikey. Yep. Obviously length, right? Yep. Anything change? Now, if in the you look power? at the, you can see how it looks a little faster than that last rod. Yeah. The tip's a little bit lighter. Yeah. So again, it's going to load with a little bit lighter bait if you're doing pitching or casting or whatever. Right. Still has really good lifting power. Right. Um, you know, a finesse Carolina rig on a 7.2M. You know, again, you, you, I, I would call it. When I fish spinner baits, a lot of times there's two kind of presentations I do. I like a short rod that's, you know, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, when I'm doing a little roll cast. Right. Tight, tight to cover where I'm trying to do real accurate cast. If I'm fishing uh, Open Mille Lacs and yeah. I'm, I'm throwing a tandem spinner bait over <laughs> rocks and I'm trying to throw it as far as possible, this is the kind of rod I'm going to grab. The more length for the, mo the longer cast. The more cast. casting distance. Yeah, yep, without absolutely. a doubt. Yep, most definitely. So, you know, that's the beauty of having that additional length. Perfect. Otherwise, same type of presentations that we were talking about on the uh, 6.8M, uh -huh. without question. Really, but great all-around rod. Yeah, I mean, it, it is. really is. We got the build sheet for this one, so I thought I'd throw this out there. So this is the ETEC 7.2M. Give him something away. Come out again. So, Jeff, you want to look, or what are we doing here, Eden? I'm just, I'm just checking his mic. Oh. I'm just coming in. I'm just yeah, popping okay. in and saying hi. My mics are on, All right? So we got this. <laughs> The build sheet for this. Um, obviously, I, I like to stick with the carbon. Batson carbon is the finest carbon fit and finish in the industry. Um, this particular one, we have a blue butt cap, and all of our tenons will fit all of our 20 butt caps perfectly. No play, no nothing. Boom. I put the 20 butt cap on here. I got my blue winding checks here. I've got my carbon, and this particular one on our carbon. It has a lip on it, so we're going to lip this. Um, sometimes we don't put that there, but we'll put the lip in here like that, right? And they put the trim ring in there that can go on there, customize a little bit, put it on there. I might put a little black Sharpie here to cover this white line, but, you know, that's custom rod building. Um, it has the carbon insert, the Alps MVT reel seat. It has the birdcage hood, beautiful foregrip. And then we have the winding check to match. And we're running all titaniums, 12, 10s, 8, 7, 6 is all the way out. And that particular one has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 guides and a tip on a 7-2 rod. Like I said earlier, um, more guides the better. I sell guides for a living. <laughs> Just joking. It helps the blank. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so that's the 7-2M. Here you go, Eden. Here, I have the next one for you, but before we go into that. Yeah, you're going to give away that hat? I'm going to give away this hat that I'm wearing right that now. That particular hat with all your cooties with all in it? all my cooties on it? No, if you don't want my cooties, I'll send you a different hat. But I, I wanted all to right. try it on. All right. No, it's a nice looking hat. It's a nice looking hat. Not I big, need... Not a big fan of flat bills, but I know a lot of well, people like them. Oh, oh, <laughs> man. Is that my Father's Day present? Wow. <laughs> You know, you know, older guys, they're not a big hey. fan of the flat bills. No, they're not. I like the round bill. So, who, do we have a winner? I'm going to let James pick a winner for this hat because he's matching me right now. We're wearing the same hat. Nice. Jimmy Craner. Jimmy, Jimmy Craner. Craner. I know that name. He watches quite often. Thank you, Jimmy, for watching. Um, get a hold of Eden. Yes. If you can find our Bats and Facebook page, it might be a little bit easy because you're on it right now. Just click on it. Send us a message. Say, hey, Eden, I want a hat. I'll respond to you and I'll send out your hat. And I won't give you this one if you're scared of my cooties. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Eden. Yeah. Thank you, Jimmy. 
All right, let's just, just keep this thing moving here. We're going to go to the medium heavy, Mikey. This is the 7.2 medium heavy. Yep. Right? So basically, we're just adding more length, right. than 6 eighths. Uh, longer casting, yeah, more a little longer water stuff. I think a little bit longer blank too. You know, between a six eight and a seven two, you know, you're up on a, most of the bass boats. You know, you're maybe raised this far off the water. You can bend that tip down. It adds a little bit of distance when you're pitching underhand, without question, having that additional length there. Um, uh, this is the one that if somebody called tomorrow and asked James or I or any of the sales guys. One one rod to do 80% of the bass, I'd tell them the 7.2 seven two medium, medium heavy. Medium, yep, absolutely. And that would roll over into Immortals or, or Revelations or, or old 783s and right. 843s and sure. stuff. So it's great all around rod for all, all right. kinds of presentations. And the walleye presentations, are you using this for any um, walleye presentations? What you'll do with this rod, and one of the most popular techniques, especially from this time of the year on, is they're pulling bottom bouncers with spinner rigs. Okay. Um, you know, these are going to, bottom bouncers are going to weigh anywhere from one to three ounces. And you might say, well, the rod isn't rated that heavy. You don't cast a bottom bouncer. Right. You just drop it down and there's a spinner rig. It's kind of got a long piece of wire with a weight in the middle, kind of a safety pin arrangement here. And then your spinner rig goes out this direction. It's kind of cool presentation. Yep. Yeah. And, it, and you, you just tick that bottom bouncer on the bottom. This is the kind of blank you're going to do that with. And it'll handle, you know... Any, the typical weight ranges, unless you're fishing super deep, are one to two ounces. And that's going to handle that no problem when you're dropping it straight down. Nice. I wouldn't suggest casting it. No. But dropping it straight down, sure. it'll work just fine. Sure. I would use that particular blank for my, my type of fishing would be more of the redfish, maybe some snook, yep. snook fishing, you know. Uh, not the big snook, but you know, the medium-sized snook, the medium-sized redfish. Yep. Great blank for that also. Yep. Yeah, so... Um, and cross over to a lot of different things for different people. Um, next one, Mikey. Oh, we got a question. Which one did we send Sean O'Connell? The one we sent to Sean O'Connell, I have no idea to tell you the truth. I think it was, a uh, boy, Carrie would know. What? I think it was the Spin 72 Medium Build as a Casting. Okay, yep. Spin 72 Medium Build, build as a, a Casting. casting. Yep. What did that one weigh that we sent down? Oh, he said it was just some ridiculous. I think it was three, it was under three, three and a half. Yeah. Built the whole rod yeah, with built. grips and real seat yes. and everything. Yeah, it was. Finished coat, the whole nine yards, packaged yep. out the door. Yeah. 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 So now we're going to get into the heavy boy. This is the big boy, right? This is our ETEC 74H. Yep. Right? So. Let's flex this one here okay. for him. Yeah. This has got a lot of power, Mikey. Yes, it does. You can see it's a little bit slower. Yeah. As you go up in power, we kind of pull it back, don't we? Yeah. But yeah. this thing has got a ton uh, of lifting yeah. power and. Um, like I said, a, a couple of weeks ago, Sarge and I were fishing the lake over by uh, Moses Lake. I'm not going to tell you which one. but Private lake. Uh, private lake, actually. <laughs> but uh, I pitched a 3 8 ounce black and blue jig. The water was kind of riled up, so we went with dark colors. and Little tiny weed point, and I pitched that jig, and it just barely moved sideways. And I reeled down and set the hook. And I mean, that fish rolled and pulled back, and I just pulled back hard because I was testing the rod. Yep. Ended up getting the fish in right away, and it was six and a half pounds. So it told me this blank, it handled what we wanted it to do real well. Um, I did also tie a frog on later. I didn't catch any fish on that particular uh, technique, but worked it. And when you're fishing a frog, one thing that I like to talk about is you want a little bit longer blank because you're keeping the eyelet of that bait up. In other words, if you if you try to run it too parallel or with a shorter rod, it wants to catch on the cover you're pulling right. it over. You know, so you keep the longer rod tip up, then reel down and set the hook. Right. Seven four is a great all around length for that. Again, frogs, heavy punching. I, I was fishing a jig and heavy cover with, I think I had 20 pound mono on um, and turned that fish right away. That seven four heavy is a great blank. Um, some of the more popular swim baits that are coming out that aren't real, real big, but they're in that half to one ounce range, that rod will, will handle those real well. Definite need for a, a heavy rod in your arsenal if you're real serious about it. Again, you can do some of them with medium heavy, but that heavy, it's going to get those larger fish out of that heavy cover a lot quicker. 
I've um, noticed we don't have any extra heavy in this not, series. Not yet, no. Yeah. Because There's, we're already thinking about what models we want to add, and there'll be some, some new stuff coming next year. Would you year. make an extra heavy in this material, Mikey? I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, I would. Well, I think we would have. If, if yeah, if you want to get into that, then we're going to steer you to some of the Revelation. existing blanks and, and immortals. In yeah, the immortals you bet. Series, you bet. Sure. Perfect. Wow, so many applications for these blanks. Yep. All right, yeah. we're, getting, we're getting close here, Mikey. We're going to go with one more here. We've got the ETEC 76M. Right. So this is obviously just more length. Right. Again, more you length. Look at the action now. Uh -huh. Remember how that 7.4 heavy looked. Yeah. Now all of a sudden you see how this tip's bending. Yeah. So it's, Back to it's the designed to load. Yeah, it's down, designed to load with a little bit lighter base. Yes. Um, yeah. Still has good lifting power. Right. I, you know, I do a lot of presentations. I, I've gotten into this Tokyo rig fishing a lot and if you haven't tried it you owe yourself to get some of those because the way it's set up it's keeping the bait from dragging on the bottom you know we all grew up fishing with texas rigs um, where you got a sinker and a hook and a, whatever your plastic bait yeah. is certainly very effective but you get into a situation where there's moss or anything on the bottom and you're hopping that bait pretty it's soon you get your bullet weight back and it's got a gob of snot on the end of it with the tokyo rig the weight hangs down and the bait stays above that I don't care what happens to that weight. I want the bait to look natural. It also pivots real naturally. So, oh, somebody's got a question. It looks like Jeff got a question. Got a question. Uh, how do these compare to the Judd on sensitivity and power? Oh, I think these are going to be. Oh, I'm sorry. Repeat the question. How do these compare to the judges? Mike, want, somebody wants to know. Mike, okay, as far judge, as sensitivity and power. Yeah, the judge is is a completely different blank um, it's a fiberglass based with some carbon in the butt to add lifting power um, it's really designed to throw reaction baits like crank baits uh, what are those ones we just got i can't think chatter baits i'm sorry baits, works yeah. great for reaction style baits like right. that um, not going to have the sensitivity that this blank does yeah. but when you're throwing those style of baits it doesn't matter because the fish are, they're not coming up and seeing uh, and barely picking it up they're popping it so and the judge is action. really designed for yeah and it's going to be a more progressive yes. action right. slower action than these and physical weight wise although for a glass blank they're very light yeah. these are considerably lighter in the, in the hand without question the judge is a great blank i i Amazing use blank. yeah i i've got two or three of them in my boat I throw 6XDs and 10XDs with them, the big crankbaits. I like that moderate action that the glass offers. Um, but for when I'm looking for sensitivity and lighter weight, I'm moving towards the Eternity or Immortal. Perfect. Thanks, Mike. Yep. Thanks. Another question, Jeff. Another question. Uh, which one would you recommend for bigger snook or redfish? Bigger snook or redfish? What would I recommend? I would probably look at the medium heavies. I like the 7.2 and the 7.6 medium heavies. Yep. Um, not huge redfish, I mean, but I've landed, you know, 30 pound redfish on a uh, immortal popping rod, yep. you know, so I would look, I would look at the medium heavies, you know, for the, for the medium to maybe medium large grade for the smaller redfish in the snook, probably the 7.2 or the 7.6 M great, great all around rods for both of those applications. Yep. yep. I don't think you need a heavy. You won't need the heavy. Medium heavy is going to be plenty in this series. And, and you're not throwing those, you're not really throwing baits that heavy. No, you really don't need to. Yep. No, no. Yep. All right. So, I think. I think we covered them all. I there think was, we oh, did no, cover. this is your last one. Oh, my last one. I'm sorry. We got one more, Mike. Okay. It, so. yep. All right. So, this is the, yeah, the 7.6 MH. Okay. I just like it because of the length, right? Yep. I want, I want to throw far. I want, and it's got plenty of power. This thing's got plenty of power, Mike. Yep. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can really pull into this thing, you know? Yep. I mean, I know the brake strengths on these are pretty high. Yes, for, they are. For, for, for their intended applications. But I prefer the 7.6 or the 7.2 medium if I'm going to go for, for the bigger or the medium size, the larger size, schnook and redfish. I do a lot of the, both of those. Yes, Jeff. Question. Um, would you recommend any of these for an A-rig or would you go to... The 7.4 Heavy could throw a small Alabama rig. Um, I'm, I would probably, again, that's more of a reaction bait where this style of rod isn't really necessary for that presentation. But the 7.4 Heavy would handle. What size? Uh, 
There's some of them where there's three to four hooks. Now, the ones that have seven or eight, I'm going to probably want to get into one of the revelations. Or that would be one where I take one of the heavier judges and lob it out there with that. Yeah. That's what I would prefer to do that with. The seven foot or the 710 judge, Mikey? Probably the 710, because you can you know, get better heavy distance. Heavy or extra heavy for a rig? I would say look at the lure and line rating yeah. on it, but it depends on which a rig it is. I, sure. yeah, probably the heavy sure. would, would be adequate. Perfect. Yeah. Uh oh, I'm going to get out of the way again. No, you're good, Mikey. Oh, you no, you're good. Get out of the way. Stay, stay here, Mikey. Stay here, Mikey. We just went over all of the RX10 models. So yes. now you know every single one. Yep. And we're going to give away our last giveaway, which is an RX10 blank. Another RX10. Another RX10 blank. We like giving stuff away, don't we? We do like giving <laughs> stuff away. So we're going to give you It's coming out of your again. paycheck. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's fine. I do it for the people. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Kyle Johns, if you're watching this still, you commented earlier talking uh, about how they're nice blanks. You are going to get one. Excellent. Kyle Johns? Kyle Johns. Kyle. Kyle. Kyle Johns. Congratulations, Kyle Johns. You won a new RX10 Eternity Rain Shadow. Yes. My opinion, the finest blank ever designed for its intended purposes. Beautiful. Send us a message on Bassin Enterprises. I'll get that shipped out to you once you pick your blank. Um, we also got a lot of comments of people asking where they can view Mike talking about this again or if you're going to write a book or not. <laughs> <laughs> Mike should write a book. And I just want to let you guys know that we do have a YouTube page, Bassin Enterprises on YouTube. We have a playlist full of all of the past Blank Talk episodes that are available at your convenience any time of the day. Yep. So if you don't remember what he quite said about any blank, you can go back there. We'll be posting that, this one here soon. And you can go back and watch any of them. That's awesome. Yeah. The other thing you can do, and I'm probably shooting myself in the foot here, but we pride ourselves in being available to the public. Most definitely. We feel that it's important to maintain that communication. So if you have specific questions or whatever, you can call our, our regular number and they'll connect you direct with me. And we can start a dialogue via phone, or if you want to get an email chain going, I'll work with you. Um, it's amazing I, for we, a guy like that to offer something we, like we that. We feel that's really important, and yeah, I know it is. James, our product manager, feels yeah. the same way, and we field questions every single day from customers. But you guys are what makes us who we are today, and that we feel that it's important to still offer that kind of service. So don't hesitate to contact us. We'll, we'll help you out however we can. Yeah. yeah. And that's Mike at BatsonEnterprises.com. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Bro. <laughs> I did it. I'm in right. trouble now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he opened his mouth because, you know, I get many, many questions every day, and I send them to Mike. Mike, yep. Mike handles some of the questions. James does. Jeff does. Kerry does. Eddie does. We've got a lot of different people. Holly does. Because um, we get a lot of people that want to ask questions. And so we want to share that information. I mean, that's who we are, and that's just the company we've always been. Yeah. Yep. I mean, we've been around for going on 22 years for a reason. I mean, we are the number one selling blank in, in the nation, and we want to keep that going. So that's why we come out with new designs. Right, that's Michael? right. Yep. I mean, people love new stuff. They do. Yeah, they love new stuff. Beautiful. They do. Excellent. Um, right. Does anybody else have any questions out there? If you, if like I said, Mike at BatsonEnterprise.com, you're more than happy to answer all your yeah. questions. <laughs> We're going on an hour and five minutes oh, now, so we right. might cut off the Q and A a little short. But again, if you have any questions, it's Mike at BatsonEnterprises.com. Yeah. Yeah. You okay. can also comment down below, and we'll get to them next episode, or we'll try to, Perfect. or we can respond to them in the comments later. Excellent. We try to get to everyone. Yeah, we do. Do you have anything else you want to say, Eden? Uh, my usual spiel, which uh -huh. is uh, make sure you like our page on Bassman Enterprises. You're on it right now. If you just click our name, you like it, you turn on the notifications, you're going to get notified every single time we make a post. That would be good for you because we are going to be posting about the Dock Ski Rod giveaway oh, yeah? on July 4th. Yep. So make sure you like our page, make sure you're notified uh, when we do post. That way you're going to be the first to know and you can be the first to enter. Excellent. Yeah. Right and on. then we also have our YouTube, which this video will be posted later. Yep. Bass and Enterprises on YouTube. And then we have our Instagram. If you're more of an Instagram type person, it is at Team Rain Shadow, which is our pro staff group, which is what we have on our shirts. Perfect. Thank you, Eden. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Thank you guys for watching. Yeah, thanks, thanks folks. Yeah, thanks, Mike, again. You bet. Everybody, we're, we're blessed. Um, take care. Aloha. Fish, Fish on. on.